All right, everyone, welcome. I'm Michelle Lowe. Uh, I'm on the board of Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts. Since the COVID, uh, our studio program has launched a series of conversations that's a way for us to connect with our member artists because the building was actually closed for a couple months. But I'm happy to report that since uh, last week, the building now is open to our members artists. So today I'm very delighted to facilitate a talk among two artists, uh, both are EFA members, Tefei and Mohamed Hamadadi. They're both a very dear friend of mine. I know both of them for a long time and uh, had opportunity to work with both of them. So Tefei initially come from China and Mahmoud was from Iran and coming from very different cultural background and different generation, also very different education arts uh, background. I found that both of your work share many similarities. I am mostly intrigued by your very unique vision to explore, to look at the relationship between the cultural differences. Also the relationship between culture and nature and humor and nature. And I found that conversation is very, very relevant specifically for our, you know, in the today's climate. So I'm just gonna briefly introduce both of you. Tui Fei, uh, she was born in China in an Asian city, the capital, Asian capital of China, Xi'an. And she went to China Academy of uh, Art in Hangzhou, went through a very rigorous uh, training to become an oil painter in Western academic style. And then she came to US, got her MFA in uh, Indiana University. That's uh, of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pennsylvania, right. Mm. So Trefi now lives and works in New York. And her work, as we can see a little bit from her background, it's very far away from representational work. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, she's been showing in many places, including the Museum of Arts and Design and the Princeton, uh, Princeton University Museums, also many galleries in uh, New York and internationally. Um, Mahmoud Hamadani, he was, uh, you were born in Iran, but came to US and you have also a very unique uh, educational background. You studied mathematics, then went to Harvard to get your diploma in uh, international diplomacy and worked as diplomat in UN for quite a while because, uh, before you actually turned to art. Um, Mahmoud's work also is in very prestigious institutions collection, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the British Museum, and included in many exhibitions internationally and in New York. So well, uh, I mentioned one of the reasons I feel it's very interesting to talk about both of your work is the kind of uh, aesthetic and similarities. So I wanted to actually start by asking both of you, maybe Tui Fei first and Mahamu, um, how do you guys meet with each other and how do you view your work in relation to Mahamu's work? And maybe I will also share my screen so we can see some of the works. Yeah, and um, first of all, I just have one uh, correction. I was born in Jinan, is also, no, Xi'an, but it's also ancient city that which uh, the province is where Confucius come from. Okay. So anyway, so um, I um, remember how I met uh, Mahmoud, uh, not all the details, but some. And we met at an uh, art studio. And at that time, um, I was, uh, somehow we got into discussion about paper. And I was, at that time, I was uh, trying to find proper paper for my work. So um, I think Mahmoud introduced me some works, a uh, paper, and then he said, oh, I'll show you. So we went to his studio and, and he showed me the paper and uh, I, I wrote down all the information. 
And he said, take some and try it. So that's how we met. And at that time, I mean, in his studio, I saw his work the first time. Um, I remembered I was intrigued very much by the line, and the, the powerful of the line and the ex expression of the lines in his work. And I think probably the theory of trees, probably the one on, in, in his background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay. and later on I learned that actually he, um, he makes the line by blow ink on the paper. So then I think the, the right there, there's a connection of our work. I think the, um, when I find the branches of the, um, when I select the branches for my work, the twigs, I find the works that are the lines very powerful and um, representative to somehow uh, resemble Chinese calligraphy. And the lines that I chose is also had to be like, um, it was powerful because uh, it had a life in it. And then uh, I think the power of the line, I can see that's the connection um, of our work, perhaps the, the, the life in it mm -hmm. is, is the connection to our work. Yeah, by the way, I think if you can see it, this uh, on, the, on my left, right, that's Tui Fei's work. Right. Okay, and this side, this is Mahmoud's work. I just pull those two together. I think they're just so poetic and beautiful. Um, do you want to share some of your insights about yes. your life? Uh, yes, uh, I, I must say that Kui Fei and I, for, for a long time, for a few years, our studios were right across from each other, like uh, and two feet apart, uh, socially, <laughs> dis socially distant. <laughs> So we used to talk and we used to go to each other's studios a lot. And one thing that we do share, it's, it's a, our very minimal approach to, to our work. Uh, and uh, minimalist, the whole idea of minimalism is, is work as much as possible and as little as necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we do work on these works and, and, and it's uh, essential to get the basics right. And, and once you get that, uh, these works of beauty uh, uh, that that uh, that come about, uh, so I've always, from the beginning, I have loved uh, Fay's work, and um, we have talked throughout this time, and other people see the common common elements in our work, and we we had a common show. You showed the picture um, just just before that. Yes, this is we were in a, in a in a show together, and uh, the. Where is the show? This was at the Hammond Museum in, in uh, Westchester. And the curator, Evelyn Tapani, she actually saw, she came to us with this idea that we should, uh, we should have a show together. Very good idea. Yes. <laughs> um, great, thank you. So I want to take us a little bit through your work and through your journey coming here. Um, just to talk about how you formalize your vocabulary now from uh, when you were, you know, a child, you know, in college time. So this is work of by Tui Fei, right? Um, yeah. And these works, uh, again, it's very representational. It's very different from the work we saw earlier. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this? Like, when did you make them? Uh, I made this uh, before I graduated from the affiliate, affiliate high school of Zhejiang Academy of Fine Art. Uh, in the high school, uh, we, we get a very uh, solid foundation training and uh, we introduced to different media. And at that time, I decided I want to uh, go to the college for oil painting department. So this is the, the uh, work that for my graduation, and, and this one uh, was um, when I graduated from college, this, uh, I made this following three, four works. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. And to, yeah. And the next one. Are these the trees? No, this is a close up of Muddy Road. Um, I like the expression of the marks uh -huh. and the texture and the earthy color. 
that, at that time, actually, um, I already started using natural material directly in my work. Uh, such as I embedded uh, grass, or um, if you can go back to works, um, uh, the, this one. Yeah, I embedded the grass and, and strings in the work. Um, so at that time, uh, I was very interested in the abstraction in nature. But still, if you look into their details, the representational details, and the one with the figure is because before we graduate, um, the professor said, well, you have to have a figure in the work so, so that I can show uh, your training uh, in college. So I put a figure in the, in the work. All right. So from that coming to this, yeah. it's like it's not out of accident because you already were interested in using natural material. Right. And interested in the kind of abstract elements of Right. Um, that because this is this work is I after I moved to United States and um, what I was uh, focused on or interested in is uh, my work is has been changed. So the work will change, but the moment um, uh, my work changed is uh, when I was in graduate school. My professor asked me that um, your work looks like Western artist's work and is why your work looks like western artist's work and at that time i was very shocked by the question and i asked back i said why chinese have to paint chinese painting and then she said that um she said um, i don't want you to paint chinese painting but you should think about it um i think i forever uh thankful for her question and i said i thought about it and I, but my language is very limited. I, I use my work as a response. Um, so uh, this is the work I made, and actually it starts the whole journey of the, my current work. Mm -hmm. So the, you basically have several uh, series, right? This manuscript series? Of nature, yeah. Of nature? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's about, are these the real tree branch, and how do you gather them? Yes, uh, this, this is a group tendrils. Um, I went to um, everywhere, actually. Um, this is, uh, you can find everywhere, in China or in the United States. And um, I find, I select the twigs that I was interested in, uh, in the woods, and then I brought back to my studio. And I keep selecting until I find um, the the branches I like and which resemble the Chinese calligraphy. Um, so yeah, this compare this is still the same theory of the one uh, with the leaves, but it's more direct. I directly use the work, uh, the, the the material in uh, on, in the work. This one I made the same uh, same uh, material. Uh, I made it in Syracuse. The, actually, the platform was made with um, table salt. So Syracuse was a city known for produce uh, salt for United States uh, until perhaps the 19th century. So that um, I made the piece in uh, Syracuse, which also ref referenced a Chinese long scroll uh, painting. Right, right. Mahomo, I, I remember you had mentioned last time that there was certain work you feel particularly close to uh, of face work. Is it, uh, is it in this series? By the way, you can ask her question. <laughs> Actually, I mean, there, are, there are several. I mean, what you have on the screen now, I really love this. I mean, uh, Faye has done many, many versions of this, but I really love this work. I Thank really you. love it because of its purity, uh, its, um, its uh, the fastidious nature of it. I always say to, to young artists when I visit their studio, so when you work, make sure your work is absolutely immaculate, unless if the point of your work is to be sloped. Uh, so it is very important uh, to, to be fastidious, to, to do everything perfectly, precisely right. And in this particular case, uh, Kui Fei, I mean, in every, in every one of her works, actually, she has that clean approach to work. At the same time, 
she's working with elements that by themselves they're not necessarily clean or, or a twig for example or in this case these these thorns each of them is a different shape they're looking different directions but the way they are placed on the canvas or on paper on, on paper there is there is there is something very uh, precise about uh, about them and and i and i really appreciate that i try to follow the same thing in my own work uh, by the way so when you look at something like this because okay so i share a similar educational background as to face so this might be a calligraphy of some sort at least a format but when you look at them what, what what kind of a first impression what is it coming to your mind it is i see a, i see a story it is a vi visual story there are no words in it but it's 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 like a scroll. It's uh, like like pages of a book, and uh, and uh, each of these could be a, each of these elements could be a word. But the whole thing tells a vision story. Mm -hmm. It's like a very long poem. poem. Mm -hmm. So, um, Faye, you want to also tell us about this series? This looks like you're actually painting or drawing, or doing uh, brush strokes. Yeah, this, is, this work was uh, is sand painting that I made for museum arts design. But this, in this picture only me, but this work, probably six by eight feet, is actually done by me and another art installer. So both of us uh, probably took uh, about a week to make. And then um, the next photograph is after show is over. Then I swept the um, the sand drawing and uh, returned to the river. So it's, it's, it's complete the work. So basically, at the end of the exhibition, all these um, characters, you know, pseudo characters, they were all uh, disappeared. Yeah, it will be uh, swept away. So the the image still is from the the, the group tendrils. Uh, is photograph is photographic. Uh, uh, I take it from my photographic work, and then I printed and enlarged. Then I traced on the platform and then filled in with sand. Uh, so it's, it's a very t labor intensive uh, process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this book actually reminds me very much of Mahmoud your work. Um, Tui Fei also had mentioned. Um, this yeah. is also called a trace, right? When I trace. feel like the title is a little bit similar to Trace, <laughs> um, right? Trace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I also wanted to ask Mahmoud, um, you know, coming from this mathematic background and diplomatic background, and how did you get into making art and what's your background influence you in your art making? Art, uh, art really happened to me. I had, I had left all that work behind and I was trying to figure out what to do. And during that process, I started drawing, not, not to become an artist, not to with any intention beyond just, just doing something. And it was in that gradually, I, I, I found things that were interested and, and uh, that were interesting and that interest uh, developed uh, into a into some kind of an obsession and that obsession morphed into into uh, a career uh, and this all happened within two years and the series what you see on screen now this is from the first series of my work this is what i started with and the series is called requiem and uh, just like a just like a music of requiem where it is it's it doesn't make you happy but supposed to reconcile you with whatever that is happening in your life at that point and uh, this is this is about reconciliation and 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 calm and peace uh, and uh, the, i mean that that's why that's the feeling that i have that's how i named this series there are different works in this series that you can show yes this mm -hmm. is this is another one this is these are different versions mm -hmm. uh, of of requiem and you use uh both point pen and the paper I use, yes i say always when people ask i say all you need is pen paper and patience 
to make these works. So this word, the tracing work, as Tracy explained a little bit earlier, you're not using the pen. You this, have a different technique. Yes, this is, and interestingly, as you see in Requiem, it's very involved. It's this constant repetition of movements. And at the beginning, I, I just got carried away. And for six months, I did not have the use of my hand because of the repetitive <laughs> movement. My hand was injured. And oh. during that time, I started blowing ink on paper just to do something. And somehow this thing came, came about, this series. It's called Traces. And uh, interestingly, I use, a, I use a poem by Gu Cheng uh, always in, in, in the introduction of this series, this series mm. Traces, because the name Traces, I took it from his poem. Mm. And the poem goes like... Uh, now on my heart's page, there is no grid to guide my hand, no character to trace, only the moisture that is <clears throat> drawn out of the trees. Uh, to spread it, I can't use a pen, I can't use a writing brush. I can only use my life's gentlest breath to make a single line of marks worth puzzling over. And these are to me lines of marks that are worth puzzling over. Right. By the way, Gu Cheng is a Chinese poet. Is a contemporary. Contemporary Chinese poet. Yes. And this is going back to the bulk point pen yes. series. This right? is, uh, yes. This is um, um, what I did with this series. Is that this is this is very the simplest of my work. It's called. The series is called Endless Roads. And the way I create this by rolling ink on paper. So I, I try to move the paper and create these shapes. And uh, again, this, this is uh, very uh, zen, the production of it. <laughs> and I think they look that way too. Mm -hmm. and, um, so they're it's it's uh, exhausting because I have to use my body to to. <laughs> Uh, to do these. Right, right. My so whole body, not just, yeah. not just a hand, just my whole body. I stand up on the floor and do these things. Oh, so these you basically put a paper on the floor. Paper and on the floor, yes. Yes, and try to control it. This is really a game of chance and will because on the one hand, I try to impose my will and get, a, get something vague that is um, 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 on my head. On the other hand, I, I give in to the accidents that happen in the process. And those accidents uh, are what make these uh, works so interesting. But these are different, right? These this is, yes, this is my penance to, to do the others because these are absolutely precise, not a dot. You know, you can't, I, I do this by, uh, by hand, uh, not, not freehand, I use a, uh, either a straight edge or a French curve. And, um, but, but I have to be absolutely uh, focused on this. A tiny dot could destroy the whole thing. Uh, and uh, it's maximum uh, discipline. Yeah, so I feel both well, I uh, yeah, I think that's done that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. oh, okay. <laughs> um, yes, this is another. This is another. And this is sorry about that. my work okay. because it is repetition of a, of a single line. It's constant repetition of a single line. And what varies is, is the distance between the line. In this case, it is a, a very dense. Uh, Mm. Yes, these are just lines, parallel lines to one another. And what you see, the effect you see, is from, from the density of these lines next to one another. It seems to me that both of your work requires very meticulous and uh, te technique, but also patience. I think, you know, coming back to, to if I, even these works, right, you, you use the store. Yeah. But you have to stuck them on the paper and the process is very time consuming, is it? 
Like right. even this word. Can you tell us about this word? Uh, this one I use a very large uh, honey locust uh, thorns, um, which uh, I reference um, hash marks. So I tie the uh, five thorns together, you uh, reference hash marks. Um, so the first, the first work you show you back to two works. You show that I record. I use uh, rose bushes uh, thorns uh, to record my personal history. It's quite small. It's probably nine by twelve inches. And for the next, if you go down to the larger installation, this one also my personal history. This one I use hash marks to to mark uh, historic events. Um, tragic events. So uh, I, this particular installation, I marked uh, the war between Japan and China during World War II. So marked each day of the war. So, so each of them representing a day or each song representing a day? Uh, each song represents a day and each, uh, each line is a month, each column a year. Mm. Uh, but this one, this installation, I wasn't, I didn't have time to complete. So uh, actually, when the, when the month is 31 days, the, that, the last mark, I, I just didn't get a chance to put it on. Um, but, but that's intended to, to each line, it represents a month. Um, let me see, I thought I had a, that's it. Um, you also did a couple work on oh, this one here. Yeah, I want to show. This is that more of public art, right? Outdoor. Uh, uh, outdoor, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And what kind of material is that you use? Is, is it, you know, uh, prone for some kind of issue, preservative issue, particularly it's outside? Yeah, is it for, for outdoor uh, piece is for six months? And I used bronze casting, and the base was made um, uh, supposed to represent uh, uh, I think cement board, but it's trying to imitating a cement block, uh, a casting cement. Uh, so the yeah the reason I uh, select the materials is because for that this material can stand the harsh weather and, and um, the conditions. And actually, when the work in the park, in the, this was commissioned by uh, Sakurati Sculpture Park, when the work showed in the park, and uh, Sandy hit New York, and the whole uh, park was flooded. When I, when I went back, actually the work was okay, nothing damaged, and I just need to, uh, when I uh, deinstall the piece, I just need to wash the, the elements, and, and um, the conditions is still very, well pre preserved right so both of you are involved in some you know uh, kind of public art or installation and Trifi we just saw the outdoor sculpture and um, Mahmoud this is a, a installation public installation you did yes this is this is at Santa Fe Art Institute and it's a work that I created it is in a pond of water so the whole work is about six inches below the water and I built a structure underneath. So these images look like they are floating on the water. If you go to the close up of it, the detail of it, yes. I, I, I use the turkey wire, chicken wire and uh, uh, insect wire to make this work. And um, um, this is one, one, one example I've done other installation as well. Anytime I get a chance, I do make installations, and the beauty of it is it is it's a specific art for a specific space. Yes. And this is something you did for a concert? Yes, this was at the Symphony Space in New York City in 2013, and I built this installation. Uh, a friend of mine, the Chan sisters, were, were performing that night, and uh, they liked my work, so I built this installation for the stage. These are cubes that I hung from the ceiling with uh, invisible uh, wire, with fishing wire. So it was invisible. And it looked as if uh, these cubes were suspended in the air. Fantastic. Um, now I feel it's the point that uh, maybe our audience would like to know 
little bit about your intention when you're making this work, as we've seen the work. So, Trey Fei and Mahamu, um, what makes you decide to practice the, this kind of work? And particularly now, during the COVID, and how does that influence or impact your daily practice that you work? And how do you think your work could be related to what is happening around the world now and in the future? Maybe a too big of a question, but I throw out, you guys. <laughs> yeah. My moon, do you want to go first? Oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> one one effect that 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 uh, COVID had, uh, of course, is 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 this has a distracting effect. <laughs> uh, but uh, the the as far as the art is concerned, it does not affect that much because art is something that I do on a regular basis. So, um, um, how does this relate? How does the work that I do now relate to the world? I think, I don't think about it and I don't think any artist should think about it. I think that an artist should do, should do the work that, uh, that pleases them and only that. And uh, somehow, if it's a work of art, if it's a good work of art, uh, it will resonate with other people. Art is something that you offer to the span of history and not right now. Now, it could be, it could be that you do something that is relevant to, to now. It's perfectly fine. But uh, I don't think that we should, uh, we should preoccupy ourselves with that much. That said, of course, you can't be a human and not be affected by, let's say, COVID-19, or not be affected by, by the political events uh, that is going on in relation to the Black Lives Movement. Of course we are affected by it. Of course I'm preoccupied by it, and I think about it. And uh, I also think about the projects that, that uh, could uh, relate to it. Um, um, I even um, did a, um, have a proposal for an installation in relation to COVID and, and uh, have ideas in, in, in the other field. But still, I do my art on a daily basis. And there's one thing also I want to say is that art is a universal language and that you see in, in, in the similarities between uh, Facebook and mine. Art is a universal language that's free of time and place. Uh, that's why somebody from Sweden today can look at work uh, uh, of, of pottery from Iran or China from 5,000 years ago, and they see the beauty and appreciate the majesty of it. It's because art is free of time and place. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh COVID uh, affect me a little bit. And before the, um, the EFA closed, I was making uh, plaster casting. So once I learned the studio will closed, I just quickly uh, picked up some materials, brought home. And I worked home for three months and uh, for uh, robins, which require little space and simple materials such as ink and paper. So I've been working in my, at home and then I just returned to my studio last week and I will continue to make, uh, to pick up where I left uh, before the COVID. Um, I think uh, if you see how uh, COVID, uh, I, of course COVID make me think about, uh, you want to think about why it happened and you want to dig deeper. So I think that uh, my work's been dealing with uh, um, relationship between human being and nature. I think that, uh, I think uh, the, the Ch Asian Chinese concept I've been referenced to, such as we are part of nature and we are all in interconnected. I think that all those issues are more urgent today. And uh, so I will continue to work on this direction. Great. So I think, I feel like we're probably gonna be closing to the end of our conversation and I want to ask both of you do you have any 
thoughts or insights you guys want to share with us and what's your you know next uh, project what are you working on what are you interested in or if you have anything to ask each other let's hear it <laughs> i'll go to his studio and ask <laughs> 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 yeah. I think my, my, uh, next, um, my ongoing project, I've been using seeds to replace uh, each character, Chinese character of uh, Dao De Jing, which was a very ancient Chinese writing, uh, uh, written about 2,500 years ago. And so I think the, what the message in that book is very relevant to what the issues we've been dealing with uh, today, so um, I hope next project will make uh, a copper piece, uh, and I will keep doing some rubbings outside. Mahmoud? Yes, I am. I am working on uh, well that that uh, project in relation with the developments with uh, with COVID nineteen. That's an installation. So I'm working on on just on regular basis uh, on. Uh, Making it just uh, making it um, working on different elements of it in, in case if I do get a grant, grant what uh, what I will do. So that's one thing. The other thing is that I'm working on another project which involves sunlight. That again has been going on uh, for a while. And then on a daily basis, uh, I do my drawings. Uh, Think of these drawings as the cup of noodles that you eat every day. Meanwhile, you're pre preparing for a big banquet. Uh -huh. So those, those projects are like huge banquets that take a long time, involve others, and, and drawings is something that I do by myself. Right, right. Well, I really look forward to, um, in the future, see the two of you exhibit together in some place. I think that will be, um, very unique and exciting uh, project, you know, visually stimulating, and it, it will be a feast for us. So I hope that's gonna happen sometime. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we are both ready for it. Yes. I <laughs> As an great, so great. So the audience here, anybody know about it? Let's contact us. We'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, I think we'll say goodbye to our audience and thank you all for joining us. See you next time. EFA Studio Program. We have a live conversation every Thursday at 6 p.m. So. This is great. Yes. Thank you, Michelle, and thank, thank you, everyone.